up, everybody? Welcome to Legacy TV and welcome to another episode of The Convo, where you know what we do here. We keep it real and we only bring you some of the best guests that we could possibly bring you. And today it's a special day for me because I've been bringing legends from uh, the MMA world. I've, I've brought my brother who beat cancer, who has a cancer company. Uh, I've brought my brother who's a defense attorney. I've, I've brought coaches from Muay Thai. I've brought uh, all kinds of stuff over. But today I have something that I haven't had on the podcast, which I'm very, very curious to ask questions about. I'm very curious to learn about. And I love all martial arts. So I'm a big fan of the art of eight limbs. And today I got the mother... not going to say the bad word. Beep. Champ in the house. We got the champ in the house. I got the WBC 135 and the WCK champ. The 135, 145, 140 pound champion sitting here with me today, getting ready to defend his WCK championship. I got Ron Skolsdang in the house. What's up, my brother? That's right, brother. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you, bro. Thank you for being here. Legend. Go. What's up, brother? <laughs> What's going on? In Welcome the to the podcast. Properly. Yeah, we want to make sure, you know, that everything gets heard and we don't get no screw ups. And, you know, this is a start of a new thing for me, too. I haven't been doing this too long and I got so many blessings, so many cool people that came by and, and to help me get started. And, you know, like I've always been a hard worker. And, you know, for me, I had a couple audio issues on a couple of them. So it's like it's been a learning phase, but I'm loving it. And like the love that I'm getting from the MMA and, and jujitsu and and the, the striking community and just the martial arts community in general it is is amazing and that we need this we need this more platforms like this for us to be able to speak about our town about what goes on here of course i want to bring other people but i want to start in my area in orange county and you're one of the the man out here you're the man that, like as humble as you are brother you're the the defending champ and i want people to know your story and that's why i'm glad you're here today to spend some time with me so we can get into it bro Appreciate it. Yeah. Question happy. for you. Did yes. you did you grow up in Orange County? Yeah. Uh, born and raised my whole life. I lived inside this whole bubble. I've never left. Where? I've what city? What city were you? Uh, did you get raised at? Uh, born and raised in Westminster for pretty much most of my life. Uh, shoot, I didn't even move out of my parents' house until I was like thirty two, thirty three. You know, Westminster was crazy back in my days. I heard it was it was so crazy. It was yeah, it was so crazy. We're not that far apart, but um, at the time, my parents were so scared of me going to Westminster High School that they found a way to have me go to Marina High School, which was the seemingly safer school. So I was supposed to go to Westminster, but they sent me to Marina instead. Which yeah, was supposed to be the nicer high school. Yeah, I remember because one of the things that would happen a lot out there was like the the there would be sh just shootings at, at like pool uh, places where you play billiards, like pool and stuff. And yeah, it was crazy out there in, in, in my younger days. It, in my younger days, it, like Orange County was a lot different, I think, than it is now. It's so much more people out here and everything has changed. Did you? Everyone mellowed out. Yeah. Everyone really Which mellowed out. Which is good. Out. I'm yeah, like, my, as my kids are growing up, I'm like, uh, and when they're going to school, like there's none of that stuff no more, really. I'm mm -hmm. like. I'm like, that's actually good, you know, but because I'm trying to tell them all this stuff that they're going to face and some of it's not even there no more. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's completely changed. Yeah, I would say back in the day, it was a lot of external like challenges you would have to go through, like shooting, violence and stuff like that. And now the challenge is more internal. Yeah. Right in here and in here, yeah, uh, with a lot of, that a lot of people are struggling with. One hundred percent. Interesting how the world's changed. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a lot to do with how people are living their lives, brother. It's like. You know, we used to have to like run to a payphone to call your mom, you know, like, <laughs> whereas now people have everything at their phone. So a, lo a, a <clears throat> lot of them. I had a cell phone when I was young. <laughs> 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 Bro, I didn't get, I, don't, I didn't even, until I, I remember, because I, when I got out of juvenile, when I was getting out of juvenile hall tours at the time I was 18, I think there still wasn't no cell phones yet. Just so I didn't grow up with cell phones and stuff. We had pagers in, in high school. Pagers came out in high school and, and like, you know, like you, you get a beep and you got to go find a pay phone. You got to have a quarter and shit. Like you, it's got to be an important phone call for you. Wait, how old are you? What is our age difference? I'm 42. You're I'm 42? Yeah, yeah, we're not that far apart. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember seeing smart beep commercials, but I never in had a In my high beeper. school days when I was in, you know, ninth and 10th grade, 
uh, I remember there was still no there was still no cell phones yet. There were we were just using pagers and shit. You know, I never had a pager. Never I got had that my first my, my first cell phone. I think I got like right after I turned eighteen or something like that. They they started coming out because they had the big ones, but they were super expensive. Yeah, but bricks. didn't get popular yeah. until you know I was coming out of being a child. Yeah, if you had a brick, you were like balling. Like, but oh, snap, you, they got a you, brick. You got kids now, three years old, know how to use phones better than their parents already. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we're, 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 we're the weird ones. We haven't given, uh, we haven't given our kid a phone yet. Okay. Um, we're on the fence. It's like, fudge, is it better for him? Is it not better for him? I think it's better not to. You know? Let yeah, them, know, let them yeah. enjoy life. Let them get outside and play and like, like you used to do as a kid. You yeah, know? We, we got him an iPad and that was like. So, is, so tell me. Ugh. What were you like as a kid? Were you getting in trouble? Were, how were, were you, how were you doing in school in junior high, high school? Were you, were you, a, were you a good was, kid? Were I was a goody two shoe my whole life. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. In the boy Scouts. Really? I got good grades. I had a bowl cut. <laughs> I was the shortest kid in class. <laughs> that's dope. Um, well, there's nothing wrong with that. You were, you were a good kid. That's, that's what I try. I, I want that for my kids. Every, I think every, every parent says, so you got good grades all throughout junior high and, and high school. Yeah. And then college hit. And then I got some, did you know where you wanted to do at that age? No, you were just kind of going through school, but doing well in school. Well, this is where this podcast comes in perfect because 17, I found out what I wanted to do. 17 years old, 17 years old. Finally, I decided, I was like, this is what. Speak a little bit closer oh, to Hello. There we go. There we are. 17. You found out what you wanted to do and how did this happen? Uh, I was watching Spike TV. I remember Spike TV. Remember Spike TV? Spike TV was the shit, man. It was the bomb. It had all. Why? why what's wrong with the people at Spike? Well, you should have never gave that uh, channel up. That's that. That was the shit. There was not one show <laughs> I did not like on Spike TV. Right? The man <laughs> show. Like all the shows are freaking awesome. Uh -huh. So you were watching Spike? Yeah, and then I was watching the Ultimate Fighter. You know, when I first that's uh, when I was seventeen. That's when it first came out. The first season. You know, uh, Forrest Griffin, Stefan Bonner, um, that whole deal. And uh, I watched the whole season from the fights to the games and contests that made it really re like a real reality show. Um, I fell in love with it. And at the time, Yahoo was popular. Who were you rooting for throughout the season? Uh, Forrest Griffin. Forrest Griffin. Yeah. And then he's, he's, he's so easy to love, right? He's a great character. I, I haven't like, met him in I person. Liked, I liked Chris Lieben. Shout, Chris out to, Lieben. shout out to Chris Lieben. I just talked to Chris Lieben. We're trying to get you on the podcast and he's already reached out to me and we're trying to get him to Chris Lieben. But yeah, he was Heck my yeah. favorite. Since you Chris brought Lieben it up, I, I had to give shout out to Chris Lieben. He was fun. He was, yeah, he made like, I, I don't know, like, it's crazy. I love the, like, you know, the, the I love the martial artist. I love the, the discipline you know, calm guy, but I love entertainment too. Yeah, so. He's unpredictable. Yeah. You have no idea what to expect from him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you watched that season. I think, you know, and, and the story has been told that, you know, many people became fans of mixed martial arts on that season, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think the whole world kind of like figured out that this is like, this is a, a real fighting. This is like a real sport. This is real people doing this. They have lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That the UFC did such a good job with coming up with the ultimate fighter. Cause who would have thought it's like, Let's do a reality TV show about cage fighters. Everybody will love it. Really? Will they love it? Because well, they don't love it right now. No, no, because it hadn't been mainstreamed. It hadn't been put in, in a way as a sport. And, and once they, it started looking like a sport and people got to know the, the fighters, it completely changed everything. Because okay. uh, some, some of those fighters are the smartest people in the world. Mm -hmm. Just because they fight does not mean that they're, you know, a delinquent or, you know, you know a bad person. Or a jailbird, as sometimes that people they get that stereotype, cage fighter, but that's not it's the still, case. Uh, it's still around. It's you know, still I still get it. People are shocked. He's like, "You're a fighter," but you know, it's what what I, what I think was kind of cool is people moved away from the term cage fighter, and now they call you an MMA fighter. MMA like, fighter, yeah, because now nowadays more popular. Yeah, they they everybody the whole industry did such a good job of rebranding the name from cage nobody says cage fighter anymore no in fact i would say if you talk to like a 12 year old and talked about the ufc he's like oh have you heard of the word cage fighter like what is that yeah yeah um, that's but, how but that's outdated how it is that's how it was in those days though in the in the ultimate fighter you know uh reality show days you know you that's what they looked at it as and but, you know, I think now that it's much more respected and that's why you see there's a lot more money in it and there's a lot more athletes in the sport. You know, it's getting legit when you have kids start doing it like Absolutely. at five years old. 100%. Now there's five-year-old MMA programs. I'm like, it's mainstream now. Yeah, 100%. And it should be. I, somebody asked me the other day, you know, and, and I want to get back to your history, but just while we're on the subject, somebody asked me the other day, well, coach, you like, you know, you do like a lot of different martial arts but what what's like the best one and i said if you want me to be honest 
there is no best one, but I would want, if I had to pick, I would pick mixed martial arts because it's a little bit of everything. And I feel like as far as self-defense wise, like minus you talking like, cause then you could get into knives and weapons and stuff like that. Then you talk about complete, a lot of people don't know how to even defend themselves when those type, types of things come out. But as far as hand to hand combat, mixed martial arts, you should know a little bit of, you should know how to, you know, do the striking, know how to wrestle a little bit, know how to like fight on the ground. Like if you knew a little bit of everything, you'd be a little bit more competent. And if something's not working, you have another option. Yeah. I mean, you know? that would be the ideal martial art. Cause yeah. Mixed martial arts is literally a combination of every, every martial art out there. There you go. You know? um, <laughs> that, that, in fact, they should get rid of mixed martial arts and just call it martial arts. That's, that's, that's what martial arts should be. Exactly. A mixture of everything. You know, it's, it, and I, it's cool to learn things on their own, which is like great, you know? But at the end of the day, if you're going to ask me as someone that's done martial arts since a, a kid and done every different martial art, I think, you know, as far as self-defense wise, like if we're not talking sport, we're talking what martial arts is created for, you should know a little bit of everything. Yeah. And if you know a little bit of everything, you have more of a chance of winning. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the more you know, the <laughs> kind, of, kind, of, kind of simple. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So 17, you see the ultimate fighter reality show yep. and you decide that you want to be an MMA fighter. Uh, I decided I want to try it. And I was like, I like this. No training before this. None. Absolutely none. I just, uh, I did football, you know, freshman, junior, sophomore, What's it? middle one. Yeah. Sophomore. And, uh, and then my senior year, I wanted to do it so bad, um, that I had to go to my, I, you know, you're in the football team, you develop like a relationship, you have a family, like it's, it's your, your crew, yeah. you know? So my senior year, after three years of just knowing and growing with everybody, I walked into the coach's office. It was a trailer at the time. And, uh, I, I had to tell him, say, Hey, I, I'm not going to be playing for you this year. Not that I was like a big player or anything like that. Like my, my claim to fame was making the highlight video because I tackled somebody and my helmet flew off. I headbutted somebody without a helmet. You know, like I made the highlight video. That was like my, that's a my, good highlight. That's like my star moment in football. Uh, Cause you know, I was undersized. I was tiny little dude. Um, and so I told them that I wasn't going to do it. So I cried. They were like, Hey, we need somebody. We needed somebody to catch the ball for special teams. Cause that was, you know, that was my, that was going to be my next highlight, you know, um, given my skill set and size and all that. But I was like, I'm sorry. I, I got to move on to something else. Yeah. You know? and then, I yahooed the nearest MMA gym to me, and I found a local jiu-jitsu studio called De La O Jiu-Jitsu. De La O, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been there. In I've Stanton, been there. California. Been there. You know, I, I'm not sure, so I don't want to quote myself. I us quote myself. <laughs> but um, And I quote. I think De La O was under Joe at some point, yeah. too. Yeah, he was a, he's under a black my belt coach. under Joe Marrero, yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there you go. Shout out to De La O. I've been actually did a podcast for Gym Crashers over there. Oh, dope. And shout out to my boy, Robert. That's uh, I, I know Robert's you know dope. Robert. He's good people. He's helped me out a lot in the beginning stages of the podcast. He told me to say hello. <laughs> hello, shout Robert. out to Robert. Hello, yeah, Robert. what up, bro? See, we we love you, bro. Um, but yeah, nice. um, okay, so yeah, I went over there. Um, you, you start right off the bat when you walk in, no experience. Like you just start doing jujitsu. Yeah, right into jujitsu, and then you know I was like, oh, I play football. I can bench three hundred twenty-five pounds. Like, <laughs> st stereotypical <laughs> mindset of someone that's never trained before. Right? It's like. Oh, dude, I'm unvinced. I'm an, I'm untouchable. I'm a, I'm a lineman. I'm a nose guard, you know? Um, and I came there and I got destroyed, of course. Um, but I'm really extreme. You know, I found that I was very extreme with everything uh, throughout my whole life. And then so I just went all in. I was like, nah, I'm not getting beat up again. Nah, I'm not getting beaten up again. Then three months later, I was like, oh, I'm starting to get the hang of it. And then, you know, then got my blue belt and the purple belt and all that stuff. Wow, um, I didn't know that. I, I know you fought in MMA, but I didn't know anything about your jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu was my first uh, martial see, art. Yeah. See, people, that's like, even the Muay Thai world champion started in jiu-jitsu. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but yeah, bro, like, um, jiu-jitsu is such a good martial art to, you know, to have period as a base. As oh, yeah. a, as it'll, it, it, I think it gets you, and it, did you compete in jiu-jitsu? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, See there, and you get kind of get you ready for if, especially if you want to do MMA. I feel like jujitsu is a good place to kind of do some competitions, so you feel like what it's like to you know wrestle and get thrown and like you know what I mean. Go at it yeah. before you step in a cage and stuff like that. Strangely enough, uh, not a lot of people know this, but I also competed against Brandon Moreno in a jujitsu tournament. Oh no shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what belt? Shout out to Brandon Moreno. Big fan of Brandon Moreno. What, what oh, belt? He's dope. Uh, blue belt. Blue back belt. At the time, yeah. Way oh, way back. You guys in the were day. blue belts together. Yeah. So we fought. We did an MMA fight way back in the day. Hold on, a jujitsu first. Uh, MMA first. Oh, you guys fought MMA first. Yeah, we fought MMA first, 
Damn. And then, uh, and then I met him again at a jujitsu tournament. Hold on. Okay, so we got to so so we got to go back. So as you were in De, De, De Los, because you you haven't took me to your first fight yet. Oh yeah. yeah. So you white, blue, purple. You were competing in jujitsu. Yeah. I I stopped at blue at De La O, and then I got my blue belt under Jiva Santana. Shout out to Jiva Santana. Respect. Amazing coach. Another yeah. another another friend of mine I, over the years has supported me with my music. You should have, when you guys. Uh, I don't know if you were part of No Limits, but. Back in the days, there was a, a gym called No Limits where Jivo was at. And I, I used to always see Jivo over there. I used to sell CDs in that little area yeah. on my car. Heck yeah. I always see him right across the street. Jivo, buy my CD. He's, he's like, uh, sure. <laughs> he's got his own uh, gym now, One Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my actually, kid goes there. He actually, his first uh, One Jiu-Jitsu was where my gym was at. They took Irvine? over, yeah, on Sky Park, yeah. on, on Fred Hill. That, yeah. was, that was my gym. Oh, snap. Yeah, before yeah. that, yeah. So I moved out and then they moved in. Um, but yeah, Jiva, shout out to Jiva. So you started training with Jiva at Blue Belt. Uh, yes, at the blue belt level. And the arm the, collector. Shout the out. arm collector. Yeah, that dude is a savage. He's awesome. Yeah. Great teacher. So, so you started training with him and, and, and you were competing uh, in jiu-jitsu. Yep. And you decided at what belt to do your first MMA fight. Um, with De La O. So I trained with De La O for like two years. And I think I got my blue belt then, and then I started. Oh, so you did striking there as well? Uh, as yeah, the... yeah, because they did they did striking at Delo Jiu Jitsu oh, too okay. as well. Yeah, right. uh, but at the two year mark, I linked up with uh, with my uh, boxing coach uh, Bruce Warren in Orange at a DWB boxing. He passed away um, since then. No, um, rest peace. Yeah, great dude. Um, awesome family, like a family. Just everything you would think of of a classic boxing gym. Right, the whole family's there. Like yeah, all that stuff. Yep. Um, Those are the ones that have the best memories, brother. Yeah. So I had my first. I had my first and only fight with uh, De Lo Jiu Jitsu, um, and we did it at remember what was it? Ken Park? Was it Ken Park? It was in uh, Oxnard. 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 Ken Smith. Shoot. Up. <laughs> Anyways, this is my first smoker. Smoothies. First smoker. Is it, we'll we'll figure it out. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, so, it was my smoke smoker, and then I go do my thing. Uh, we end up winning um, first round knockout, um, and then I didn't learn how to hit properly, so I was. I was hammer fisting him with my thumb. Yeah. And so ever since then, I have this big old bulge on my, <laughs> on my hand from all the scar tissue. And uh, it was such a smoker that there was no actual doctor on site. So some dude with medical background found a stick and some tape and then taped the stick to my thumb as a splint. I was like, this is genius. I love it. And it worked. <laughs> and so my first fight experience um, was there. Seven years later. Um, but you were hooked right off the bat. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I, you, you, every you, day. I skipped the parties. I still went to school, went to college and all that stuff. Um, but when I wasn't in school, I was either at work or I was in the gym. What did you do for work? Uh, a bunch of, I've done like every single job you can think of. Like, uh, dude, I worked at like Chuck E. Cheese. I was the mouse. <laughs> you know, I, I tossed pizzas. <laughs> the Muay Thai world champion was the mouse. You yeah. like, kick your head off, bro. You imagine me just as Chuck E. <laughs> 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 but that's cool man i worked at fat burger once i worked yeah. at P uh, palace park yeah uh, you know that it's all good man it was, yeah, you, was we're a young kid i was busy yeah, yeah. it's just so uh, you kept in you kept yourself into positive things this is what you know a lot of people especially that want to be fighters and stuff and and kids growing up should be doing you know i i tell my kids like School is important, you know, martial arts is good. Do positive things and make good habits. When you make good habits, you have no choice but to become a successful person and to live a good life. And yeah. and that that's what the path you were already on from, you know, working and already wanting to knowing what you wanted to do as far as a career. Yeah, I, I already knew, you know, when I saw that on TV, I was like, all right, I want to do that. I want to be a world champion. Yeah. Like I had in my head, like that crazy, that crazy pipe dream. Were you yeah. doing... um? So were you doing, as you were doing MMA, were you also doing uh, Muay Thai fights? No, not at all. I didn't join, I didn't learn Muay Thai until I joined Timo Yama. Oh, wow. Um, so seven years later. Uh, seven years into your MMA career, you, you, jo you joined uh, uh, Timo uh, Yama. Timo Yama, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so after seven years. So I only got one fight in um, the first seven years, yeah. First seven years, got one fight in. Wow. Yep. And so then once you got with yep. Timo Yama, you started really. Yep. Yeah, I, I transitioned because I, 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 I was like, I need to make this a career. Yeah. I was like, fudge. I'm like working three jobs. I'm going to school. I'm training. I'm like, I need a fight. Yeah. I need a fight. Um, so I, uh, you know, I, I was kind of locally known within the circle, small circle. And uh, so I got some invites to some gyms. Um, I came to Timo Yama and they busted up my leg first day. Actually, the first day, um, they didn't even let me practice with the team. They put me in cardio kickboxing, <laughs> which is hilarious, right? Mm. Now that I know what cardio kickboxing is, they put me in and it was, uh, it was taught by Shane Del Rosario. I Shout out um, to Shane Del, 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 Del Rosario. Excuse me. Rest in peace, man. I, another dude that I met uh, selling CDs, man. I met him in Irvine 
at a gas station off of Jamboree and Barranca. What a fucking cool dude that guy was, man. I talked to him for like 10 minutes. He bought my CD. He was telling me about his fighting career. And man, I was devastated to, to hear what happened to him, man. It was, uh, it was crazy because I, I ended up becoming the general manager of Team Oyama. Um, and then so when all that happened, the press was going crazy. So I was getting bombarded with phone calls from like news outlets and stuff like that, trying to figure out what happened. Um, so we had to keep everything low key and at bay and stuff like that. Um, so it was a very crazy time and the family wanted their privacy. Yeah. So we had a fight to not release any information and not book anything or, or whatever. Um, so it was, uh, it was definitely a crazy time. Yeah, he was, and he was, man, he was scary on the feet. <laughs> oh, dude, he was His so UFC limber. UFC fights, I remember I was so excited when he'd fight. And, he, yeah. Because of him, um, because of him, you know, I believe, you know, when I joined the gym, uh, he was the reason why that gym was known for having big people move like little people. Yeah. You know, because um, he was so limber. I mean, the first American WBC world champion. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was very good, like, and very good on his feet. And I remember, like, the, the way they would talk about him, too. Like, he's the next big thing. Yeah. He's the next big thing. What a crazy I mean, life is crazy, man. You know, it mm -hmm. just is. A, it's a trip. Rest in peace, man. You know, shout out to his family and um, what, a, what, a, what a great fighter he was, man. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I joined Team Oyama. They, they, Busted up my leg, black and blue, for weeks. Loved it. I was like, this is the gym. I don't need to look at any other gyms. This is the one. Um, and then, so I started amateur. And at that time, it was really hard to get fights. Because, uh, what is it? The CSAC or whatever the amateur... Uh, camo. That's mm -hmm. what it's called. Camo yeah. just started then. So they just started doing amateur cards. And so I was the first, uh, the first MMA promotion in Orange County was IFS. Right? And finally, there was cards booked. And there was no fights available. And I was, at the time, I was a 125-er. You know, um, I got heavier over the years. Um, flyweight yeah flyweight mm -hmm. and uh the only thing available was this ifs tournament 155 pounds uh 18 man or 16 man tournament and then so coach was like hey you should do this i was like oh snap 155 is like yeah i think you can do it otherwise there's no fights there's no fights available yeah. and i was like let's do it and then so we did it uh we went through the 16 man bracket and we ended up winning the uh the first ifs title um ever in the first orange count southern orange county camo show so really you became cool. an amateur champion. Yeah, I became first amateur champion. Stars, yeah, yeah. In the first like first year I joined Team Oyama. Sick. Was awesome. Turned pro afterwards. Lost my pro debut. <laughs> <laughs> All this hype, right? And then I was like, "Oh, Damn. you're the next big thing. You're getting the WB WEC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera." Lost my pro debut. Um, and then uh, that's MMA. Yeah. That's MMA. And then, yep. And then Ian McCall came back to the gym. He went through some stuff. Came back. And then ended up getting back into the UFC and then fought for the world title. And, you know, that whole, that whole ordeal happened. So it was, it, was, uh, it was a really crazy, fun journey. Yeah. Shout out to Ian McCall. Yeah. Also yeah. good peoples. Yeah. Nothing yeah. but good peoples talking, yeah, talk, talking about I've, today. I've talked to Ian uh, recently as well. And hopefully he, he, he'll be coming down soon. Uh, he's, uh, he's training and he's teaching and he's uh, doing a lot of stuff to help athletes, which I think is very respectful and cool yeah. to do. And, and uh, it's a whole different, as I get older, I'm seeing it's a whole different path after Especially like in fight sports, <laughs> he built a he built a bare knuckle champion. Yeah, yeah, like he's, in like two years. Yeah, he's a, he's an animal Mark, himself. Respect Mark the shark. Yeah, respect, respect. Shout out Ian McCall. Yeah. So uh, you so how your MMA career? Uh, you start going and then you end up having a victory over Brandon Moreno. Yeah, yeah. So my first few fights ended up um, fighting Brandon Moreno. We fought him. Uh, I hit him so hard, so many times, and he freaking took it like. There's been two guys, no, not three guys, three guys now, my whole career. So I've been fighting for 21 years now. I've been training for 21 years. And I've had three guys that were able to withstand, oh, no, two guys. Um, two guys that <laughs> have been able to withstand like full, hard, nonstop back-to-back -back strikes. And it was him. Another dude is uh, Rudy Morales. Yeah. Um, another tough freaking dude. Yeah. Um, but with Brandon, yeah, I hit him so hard. Like, dude, if you Brandon's watch, an animal. Oh my gosh, dude. That guy's an animal. In, Big in, heart. Yeah. Big heart. Huge heart. Yeah. Like, he should have he died you can't, if he didn't. You, you, can't, uh, you can't teach that. No. Dude, I, <laughs> there were some points where I hit, he had his back, he was on his back, and I would throw an overhand right at his skull. His skull would bounce off of the canvas, and he'd still keep fighting. I'm yeah. like, how? Yeah. Yeah. He's, there's no quit in that, dude. You gotta, no. We got to put him out. Yeah. Yeah, he's an animal. Freaking insane. That's how he became a UFC champion. Yep. Great fights, too. The, all those fights with uh, Figueredo were crazy, man. <laughs> he, he deserves everything. Yeah. He yeah. deserves everything. Shout out. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so you, um, so you go through your MMA career. At what point do you decide, 
Like, I want to get into Muay Thai, like, uh, fights. During COVID? <laughs> COVID. No way. <laughs> Out of all things. <laughs> COVID, COVID made all <laughs> kinds of things change for people, right? Me, <laughs> made me decide to go to Muay Thai. Okay. Um, That's hey. crazy. Like, during that time, like, yes, a lot changed for, for a lot of people, I think. I mm -hmm. think I think everyone's lives kind of changed uh, in, in, a, in different ways. Because that, that really hits home when you, you're, you can't can't leave the house <laughs> and do nothing businesses shut down yeah, like Kimoyama crazy. got shut down it was crazy a lot of people a lot of people lost their businesses a lot of people lost their uh you know a, a, a lot of people lost a lot of things during that time it, it was tough i saw a couple of my friends shut down their their jujitsu gyms it, it was yeah, rough it's tough man, man. crazy oh, still lingering people are still suffering now man <sighs> yeah Jesus. the ramifications of it but yeah three years ago gym got shut down and i put all my eggs into one basket. I put my whole life into Did you guys shut down fighting. completely or did you guys put the, the black drapes up on the window? <laughs> we shut down properly um, as uh, ordered by the state of California. <laughs> you, know, you know he's going to say that. We're all going to say that. <laughs> um, for, for a whole week, yeah. And then... <laughs> for, for, for 24 hours. Because <laughs> at the time, you didn't really know how serious it was. Yeah, we were like, yeah. dude, is it that bad? It's so bad we can't go run on a trail? Yeah. It's, like, it's, is that bad? It's, it's, and then... <laughs> Yeah. Some of us started getting skeptical. Yeah. You know, and then there's people still driving around with masks on by themselves. Believe yeah. it or not. No, I see them. Yeah. I, see them. <laughs> I mean, like, to it's each quite their frequently. Own. It's, to quite, it's quite frequent. To each their own, but I don't like, you know, I understand it, but like in your own car, I don't think you're going to, you know, especially if the windows are rolled up, maybe you could just let that one slide. To me, it doesn't bother me as long as you don't make me do it. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah. hey, do you can wear, you can wear a you gas can wear mask. Many, yeah. You can wear a freaking <laughs> clown wig. I mean, shoot, you can walk around in a G string as a dude, whatever. <laughs> Just don't make me wear it. Don't, don't make me wear. do it. Yeah. yeah. Let me do what I yeah. want to do. You can do what you want to do. So during COVID times, you're like, you know what? I'm going to switch up. I want to try. Is it something you had always wanted to do? Like during, while you were doing our MMA or no, just you uh, really, because you were, your striking was always really good. So you just thought maybe I'll give it a shot. No, it wasn't that, you know, it's uh, I got, I got torn. So my, my pipe dream has always been to be a world champion. Right. And uh, I wanted to do that by getting into the UFC. And I had all the opportunities to do that. And, you know, along the way, I put on some extra stuff on my plate. You know, I became uh, a leader at Team Oyama. I ran the program. I helped get out of debt and, then, you know, all that stuff and get the whole business portion of it situ situated and stabilized. And so over the course of my fight career, I focused more on the business side than I did on the fighting side. So that's why I don't have that many fights in the course of 21 years, because I took so many stints of not fighting because I was focusing on the business side of fighting. Yeah. You know, but I, I started an MMA uh, accessory company called Lace and Loop. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of personal training. I did consulting. I helped other people open up gyms, you know? And so the actual fighting aspect was kind of put on the back burner. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of inconsistent. And, and if you're going to fight, if you're going to be in the, get to the UFC or be in the UFC, you need to be, that's got to be, gotta be, be dedicated. a full-time full thing. You need to be dedicated, you know, yeah. but all my friends and teammates, you know, Carla Esparza, she won a world title. What did yeah. she do different? She's she trained, she trained full-time. Yeah. She, she didn't worry about doing a bunch of stuff, you know? Alex Perez fought for the world title, you know, um, he didn't try doing a bunch of stuff. He focused on fighting. Chito yeah. Vera didn't do a bunch of different stuff. He focused on fighting. Now he's fighting for a world title. Shout out to Chito Vera yeah. and, and Jason Perillo. Uh -huh. Shout out to Jason. He's coming down. What up, everybody? Want to take a quick second out of the podcast just to give a shout out to our sponsor, the best criminal defense attorney I know. The last time I got in trouble, I needed somebody that was going to look into my case and actually fight for me and give me the best deal possible. And he did that. And I'll make sure that he does that for you. Make sure you shout me out if you guys reach out to him. They're the sponsor of the convo. You know anybody, a family member, or yourself that make a mistake, you want somebody like him on your side. Arash, please let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Thank you. Arash Hashemi, 310-448-1529, or HashemiLaw.com, H-A-S-H-E-M-I-L-A-W.com, or just Google hashtag BetterCallHash. Remember that, BetterCallHash. You'll find me on every social media channel. All over the internet. 310-448-1529. You better call Hash. Heck yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to talk oh, to dude, him. Dude, you got another of good people on your podcast. <laughs> you got a freaking we, sick list. Uh, hopefully we can get Jason here before he, uh, Sean fights for the title. But either way, I, I'll be blessed. He, he already knows he's the homie. So and whenever he comes, it's all good. But yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, we, we did that. We did that whole deal. And then so when COVID hit, I was like, fudge, what am I going to do? Like. Gym's closed. I can't do any private lessons. Like I'm making zero money right now. Like I'm effed. Um, so I was like, so I made some phone calls. Luckily, through fighting, one of the biggest gifts out of the many gifts that fighting has given me has uh, been able to build a network, like an insane 
varied network. I literally have a connection to anything you can think of. Freaking candy, baby seats, airplanes. <laughs> like you need, I don't know, you need slime, whatever. Yeah. You know, I know, I know how you feel. Like raw sugar. I, I know how you feel. Right. Like right. people, when you are into martial arts, people love people that do martial arts. It brings, arts. It brings it everybody bring, it brings, together. It brings good people yeah. ar- around you. Dude, uh, like my, all my sponsors are all my friends that yeah. I met through fighting. Yeah. The most random sponsors ever. Like they have nothing to do with anything. Um, but they're a fan of martial arts. They're a fan, a fan of martial of, arts and they're, and they're great friends of mine. And they're so, a fan of good people, obviously, because you're a good person as well, brother. Appreciate it. Um, try to do some good. I mean, martial arts, there was two things I was always big on, martial arts and community service. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I've, I found purpose in life a little later in life, and that purpose was to make the world a better place through my vessel, which is martial arts. There you go. You know, um, so even then. So, so, so yeah. during COVID, you just like, you're like, I'm going to go all in on Muay Thai. Was there a lot of fights during that time? Did you fight during, during the actual COVID time, or you just started training full Muay Thai? No. So it's, oh, it's, this is such a bad story. No, you got to um, tell I hate us. sharing it. Yeah. I hate <laughs> sharing it because this is going to make people so upset. Um, so... I wasn't even thinking about fighting. I was like, I'm done fighting. I, I can't fight. I got to provide for my family. I got a, I got a wife and kid now. You're going to work. You know, I got I to work. So I, I called up everybody. I was like, hey, I need to do other businesses. And uh, I, I need to do something besides fighting because fighting ain't working out for me right now. So I linked up with a bunch of people. I had a bunch of opportunities, thankfully. And then uh, I ended up, in the past three years, I opened up like five different businesses. Damn. Um, yeah, I went freaking ham these past three years. Just trying to build all these businesses, uh, either from scratch or just taking them over. So, um, I'm entrepreneur ish right there. Yeah. We went, we went freaking hard uh, and I, I didn't just want to provide more family. I wanted to give back to the community too, as well. So I co-founded a nonprofit called seniors fight back. So during COVID there was a huge rise in, uh, anti-Asian hate seniors fight back to provide self-defense resources uh, for the elderly community. That's awesome. And then the Asian community and then like specific uh, groups like women's groups, stuff like that. Um, and then we won nonprofit of the year last year. That's yeah. Sick. Super crazy. That's dope, um, bro. Yeah. And then that opened the door. That. Dude, life is crazy. And then that opened the door. I met a bunch of politicians and then a bunch of people pushed me into politics. And then I'm going to run for mayor of Irvine. Mayor of Irvine. Yeah, we got random. To, I might random. have the guys. I might have the mayor of Irvine here today. Do you, you guys see what we're doing over here? 2024. <laughs> projected. Make sure you vote for him on the mayor. We'll get, we'll get all the info <laughs> at the end of the podcast. Yeah. But you guys got to vote. I, I want to be able to take a picture one day with the mayor and be like, the mayor's got my back. <laughs> it's it's crazy how life works out man but yeah that's um that's that's the philanthropy business side and then so i was like hey there's something missing in me you know i thought i'd be okay like hey i got my fights in you know i had some notable wins um i got to help a ton of people out through martial arts already you know maybe my days of competing are over and uh i was getting a little sad you know i was opening businesses they're all they've all been doing really really well you know um the community service is doing good but there was like an emptiness that i was feeling you know loved by my family and my friends you know, a good relationship with my parents, all that stuff. Like everything is good, but something, something inside didn't feel right. You know, and I was like, "What is it? Am I that weird? Do I need to punch people in the face? <laughs> like, is that what I'm missing?" You know. So I, I, I discovered that all of us have some level of violence inside of us. But over the course of urbanization and you know our current culture, we're not supposed to be violent at all. So we, we've been subduing that. So like, if you didn't know I was a fighter, you would have no idea. Right. Um, even outside of the ring, I am not aggressive or violent at all. I don't even say curse words. No. You know. Um, no. I, I came to your spot uh, and to the crowd spot, and like that's your business, of course. But like the way you carry yourself, bro, is like with I, I watch you with other people too. Like I, you're very respectful. Very <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, but, <laughs> you would least you wouldn't expect it yeah. if I didn't know that you can destroy someone in a matter of seconds. But in the ring, <laughs> the ring is a little bit different. Something something changes in the ring. It's weird. The bell rings and I get this tunnel vision and then I turn into this like this robot and all I hear is my corner's voice. I don't even hear the crowd. I just hear my corner talking. And we have it. My 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 coaches, Colin Oyama and Romeo Danza. Shout um, out. Yes, amazing coaches. Uh, they they shaped me to who I am today. You know, I'd love and, to have Romeo on. Romeo and me, we we grew up in the same circle. I was telling you earlier, and I'd love to have Romeo. I know he doesn't. He's not on social yeah, media or nothing. He hates, he <laughs> but hates shout out the to Romeo. Shout out to Romeo. I'll try. I'll try. Nothing. A bottle of Jameson can't yeah. persuade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Romeo. But yeah, we uh, we did that whole dealy, and uh, they guided me through and shaped me into who I am today. You know, and I decided to fight again. I was like, let's do it. And I was like, fudge, and like. How am I going to do this? I'm, I'm managing like five different businesses and I got to take care of my family. How the heck am I going to fit in training for a fight? 
Like I gained like 30 pounds. Like I, I'm squishy right now. Like this is not good. Like I'm unhappy with how I feel and how I look because I'm used to being in fight shape all the time. You know, um, so I was like, all right, what do we do? I'm like, calculate the hours. And so I made a decision. I was like, well, if I cut out the grappling. That'll cut my training in half. So instead of training eight hours, maybe I'll train four hours. You know, instead of doing two a day, I'll do one a day. So I decided to switch. And, and I had no intentions of fighting for titles or anything. I just wanted to fight for fun. Um, so I was like, all right, let's be a part-time fighter. Let's, let's put it whatever time I can. I can. I can schedule out four days of the week where I can train in the gym. Monday through Thursday. 7 to 45 uh, p.m. until 9 p.m., you know, and then um, it worked. And then somehow I got my first fight back. I got a freaking title shot for the WBC. Right off the bat. Right off the bat, after a huge hiatus. That's crazy. Um, yeah, they're like, hey, you want to fight for, or they didn't say, hey, uh, we kind of pushed the issue. Um, and I wasn't even supposed to get the shot. And the only reason why I got a WBC title shot is because of who you are. No, nope. not even. Nope. <laughs> nope. Still didn't earn it. <laughs> Still didn't earn it. Um, I was trying to shoot for the stars. Thank right you. Yeah. Fudge, I wish. <laughs> Fudge. But don't worry. The challenges keep going. Uh, <laughs> even today. I'm trying it's to get it. It's all good. You Remember Rocky won? Yeah. You got a shot at the title. That's there's, all that matters. There's like eight Rockies now? Yeah, you got a shot at the title. Yeah, I think Who I'm only at number five. So I, got I three don't care. <laughs> you give me a shot at the title, I'm taking that shit. <laughs> Whether I can win or not. Like, that's like... You know what it's all about. Yeah, so we, we took it. Opportunity, we, opportunities in life that sometimes come at you. If you don't snatch them when they come at you, they're gone. And somebody else would dive on them and live your dream for you. Yep, so, you right. so you saw the opportunity to, to go for the fighter. You guys were pushing for the championship, and you got the title fight. Yeah, they said, they said yes. It took a little elbow grease, but it worked. <laughs> like, um, so before, I, I, I always try to say yes to everything. You know? yeah. um, and so I did some Muay Thai fights. Um, back in the day before COVID hit. And uh, we just did them for fun, really. My main priority was MMA, but we did Muay Thai fights for fun. And then we ended up, all my Muay Thai fights actually ended up being against like high caliber fighters. I didn't fight one bum. Everybody I fought has been like serious contenders, just coincidentally. But for whatever reason, um, the strategies, not for, the strategies worked out. The coaches believed that my style could match up with theirs and it worked. I fought some legit guys. Uh, everybody I fought, very well respected. Yeah, but there was one guy I fought. Um, he was very Marvin. Uh, Marvin. Uh, shoot, Pardon. not any disrespected. Uh, Marvin Madriaga. Jeez, um, legit one of the top Muay Thai fighters in the country at the time, destroying everybody. Um, we came in there, massive underdog, and we knew we were getting. They were bringing in Tomato Can guy with two MMA or two Muay Thai fights. They're bringing you, know, you there to to give to lose. Yeah, yeah. They're bringing me lose in his hometown. You know, and he is a star. You know, he sells out the crowd. The whole crowd's there for him. I brought like 50 people with me from Orange County to San Diego. Oh, see. You know? Yeah, <laughs> oh, see, Orange County. But we found 50 people that came. It was crazy. <laughs> you know, and they, they, they know they're bringing us in to die. Yeah. You know, and then we're like, hey, coach is like, hey, you can beat them. You can freaking beat them. Just follow the game plan and you can beat them. I was like, okay, follow the game plan. Yep. Um, and I was, always had a dumb blind faith in everything that I do. Either I believe it or I don't. Yeah. You know, business, fighting, religion, whatever. Blind faith. Um, if I believe it, I got to do it all the way. And so we go in there, we end up um, winning by third round knockout. And then the whole crowd goes silent. You know, they're like, uh, the heck just happened. You know, and I felt like I had a big old target on my head. I thought the crowd was going to kill me. <laughs> so we, we, we go and do our thing. And so when we accepted that fight, coach came up there and he's like, hey, we know what you're doing. We know why we're here. Like, you brought us in to lose. Yeah. Right? I want to make a wager. We'll take this fight. But if we win, we want a shot at the WBC. And then uh, the promoter was like, okay. Didn't even think twice. Sure. Bang. He didn't give a fuck because he thought, excuse my language, guys. I wanted to keep it good for your, for his <laughs> podcast, especially because he's running from here. But they, they brought you, they, they, they were, they, loose. yeah, they didn't yeah. think you had a chance. Yeah. So, especially if they're like, all right, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Boom. Shook on it. We won. And then, you know, a few years later, you know, we called, no reply, no call back. You know, I was like, no, nah, oh shoot, we're not going to get it. COVID came back and they're like, hey, uh, you want to fight? He's like, yeah, but we're only fighting for the WBC title. Yeah. Remember the bet we made? Yeah. I'm like, yo, it's a shot at the WBC title. And they're like, all right. So they give us a shot. And then the, the champion at the time was uh, Travis Clay. Big, giant, um, bantamweight dude, destroying everybody, defending his title multiple times. Um, we came in there, another massive underdog. And then we ended up winning fourth round knockout. And it was insane. What a freaking WBC title. Um, WBC fourth. title, folks, right there in front of you. Boom. Yeah. Champ yeah, and, right here. And if, you, and if you're not KO. into... Yeah, it was... 
it was a crazy fight. Like, oh my gosh, we went nuts because we knew we were underdogs. Like this guy was legit. Yeah. Like we knew if yeah. we didn't finish him um, in the first few rounds, like there's a good chance he's going to destroy us because yeah. um, he gets be he gets better and stronger as the rounds go by. Yeah. So we had to finish him like soon. So we, oh, sorry, we knocked him out in the first round. Yeah, um, first round. First is it first round? First round or second round? I forget. Anyways, yeah. Um, we we, won we that knocked time. him out. We knocked him out. That's what was moving. Maybe we're, you can put a clip of it, it right now. It could be any round, okay? It could be four fifty nine <laughs> or two two fifty nine of the last round. Don't matter as long as he's out. He's out. That's the the ultimate decider. So I, that was fucking crazy. Bro. It's fucking crazy. Off of a bet, champion. yeah, we became a WC <laughs> champion. And like, how'd you feel, man? Like, top the, of the world. Yeah, it, I it, seen the pictures and stuff when you first became. I was like, man, that's couldn't, crazy. Surreal. WBC champion, yeah. dude. Like, and like, they don't f around, man. They have a whole organization. Like, a a, a representative from the WBC came out. And he goes like. Congratulations, <laughs> you now bleed green. I was like, oh, so now yeah, yeah, I bleed yeah. green. Nobody could take that from you, man. Yeah, so it was, it was definitely it was definitely awesome. And WBC is recognized internationally, yeah, you know. For sure. 100%. Everybody in the world knows what WBC 100%. is. You know, to have a green belt is freaking I'm I'm so blessed to be even You did it. You did a damn thing. One. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it was super dope. So fast forward, um I've I've been beating all the contenders in the uh 135 division in America. I can't find anybody to defend against 135 pound. So they find the number one. Uh, well, no, they, they don't have anybody at 135. And then so they find me a tough dude from Classic Fight Team, Diego Paez. Uh, or not Diego, uh, Chris, his brother. Um, at 140, he's like, hey, uh, I can't find you anybody at 135. You want to move it to 140? You can fight for the WCK world title. I was like, yep. I was like, I don't even care who it is. I'm like, <laughs> world title, WCK, on it. Got Let's it. rock. And he's tough too. That whole gym is tough. Yeah. They got nothing but monsters coming yeah, out there. Yeah. One hundred percent. Tyler, great coach. He trains he trains freaking everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, I um, had one of my old like uh a kid that started with me trained over there and uh was one of the coaches there for a while. And yeah, Tyler's always been like a, a pillar in the Orange County community of mm -hmm. martial arts. Yeah, great dude. Super great dude. Yeah, and the Pius brothers, yeah. savages. Monsters. <laughs> Monsters. You know? Shout out. Respect. Yeah, so of course I'm like, ah, oh, fudge, of course. You know, I mean, we, we expected no easy fights, you know. Yeah. So we, we did our thing. We came out there. We fought um, for the WSK world title. We ended up uh, knocking him out in the second round or something like that. So very fortunate again. And then we won the WCK world title. So that was dope. So I was like, oh my gosh, did I literally have like two titles You're now? The w yeah. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm like fighting for 21 years. They're right there. Yeah. And I still have them. <laughs> they're, I'm still, they're right there. I'm still an active holder. It's not like I won them once. I'm still defending them. You're the defending champ, and a, bro. And I'm a freaking full grown adult right now. Yeah, like, I'm, man, I'm not supposed to be fighting. It's amazing, bro. <laughs> like people, the... It's not that you're. this was what you were meant to do, you know? And yeah, it's so, crazy because at 17 years old, I have a kid... I have a kid in my gym. Shout out to Yoshi. He's he's 17 now, and he's competing a lot in jujitsu, and he also does Muay Thai. And this is this his dream. He he trains five six hours. He goes to school, comes from school, sits at the gym, does his homework, waits for someone to open the door, goes in, and trains till 10:30 at night. And and you know like when you have that kind of desire to become something like that, you know, and you put your all into it, this is the result. Yeah, and, and I would say, because I didn't know, I wish somebody told me this when I was a kid. I was just so stubborn and extreme with what I did. I just kept going. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't ever, oh, shoot, I'm, I, I still haven't stopped. I'm still doing it. Yeah. But like. Uh, you're still doing it because you're actually getting ready to defend the WCK title on March 16th yes. at Saquon Casino coming up right here in uh, Cajon, California. Let's go. It's coming up quick here. Yeah, about uh, less What's than What's the name weeks. of your opponent? Uh, Richard Cruz from Mexico. Another tough dude. Um, and then. Richard Cruz. Yeah. The, does he have a good record? Uh, yeah, he's fought everywhere. He's fought in Thailand. He Tough fight. More, he has more fights than me, more experience, all that stuff. Well, wait, what's the weight class? Uh, 140. 140. Yeah, so he's, he's going to come try to take the belt from me. He's not going to take the belt from you. Cannot. <laughs> I like it too much. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, you got everything. You got everything you, you going for you right now. You're... You got you got the cryo spot too, so you're recovering. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, it helps so much. You know that. <laughs> shout Shoot. out, shout out to the cryo you the other spot. Day. You know, cryo spot. Uh, I went there and checked it out. But yeah, so how's your training gonna be like for 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 this camp? Getting ready for this? Are you separating everything, or are you still gonna be working? And I know you're at a point now where you gotta kind of do both. You can't. I'm still training part time. I've been training part time <laughs> for the past three years. I trained part time. It can be done. Still. It can be done. Yes, yeah, it can be. I've, I've learned how to be more efficient with my time. Why can't you go to school and 
train and compete. Why can't you work and train and compete? Yes, you can. It can be Mm -hmm. done. Here's a person right here in front of us that is the world champion right here sitting in front of you. And he is also has multiple businesses that he's running. Yeah, I'm uh, I go to actual team practice four days out of the week from 6 30 PM to 9 30 PM on uh, Monday through Thursday. And then I squeeze whatever I can on my own everywhere else. I run weight, strength, conditioning, um, all that stuff. And it's been working. Yeah. I've, I've learned how to get a lot out of the time that I spend. So like before I used to train, you know, 11 to two o'clock and then six 30 to nine 30 every day, you know? And, uh, you know, that was cool. It's fun. I learned a lot. I got beat up a lot too as well. Uh, but these days just how time allows I can, I can put in four hard days a week and then run and strength conditioning in between. Do you, do you believe that? Do you believe that now as a older athlete that's been doing this for a while, that uh, recovery is very important for an athlete? Oh yeah. And, and you don't believe in it until you need it. We, we live in a culture where you don't want to prevent anything. We only want to fix stuff. Right. And that was me. Um, I didn't get any treatment unless something was broken. Unless you're until you break something, then you want to go and get some treatment. Yep. <laughs> you know, and that's the worst way to think of it. And we can tell everybody all day long, even right now, recover prevention very very important no one's gonna follow it uh yeah. because we're so busy and caught up with everything that unless it's an actual problem that needs to be fixed yeah it's not a problem that needs to be prevented it's unfortunate you know? and that's the that's the world we live in yeah you know getting ready to defend the title soon and and you know outside of the title i know this is a, a big fight for you and i know this is your main focus are, are is there any more goals with muay thai after this or have you thought about doing mma again yeah, definitely open MMA. Um, I have a as, I have, as the reigning WBC and WCK champion. I mean, that's that, you know, I'm these days striking is big in MMA. So yeah. the, I'm sure the door is probably wide open there for you to get back in there too, if you, if you really wanted to. Kinda. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, MMA or Muay Thai, it's the same. Fighting is fighting. Like, yes, sir. I just like it. It's fun. That's what I like to hear. It's fun. Fighting is fighting. See, that's why I love Muay Thai, but I love a champion that also will say that yes i do everything else as well and fighting is fighting because that's what it ultimately is and we should look at it as that especially we're not in the 1980s 1970s anymore we are in the 2020s now like let's be smart and realize that fighting is fighting and everything is part of fighting <laughs> as long as- life is fighting <laughs> So, that, so after this fighting, uh, that's great. That's good to hear because I think, like you know, especially with your the what as good at striking as you are, the and there's endless possibilities still. And where you're training out of, you got action to do whatever you want still. Yeah, I, where we may we may fight with Combates. Um, that may be an option. I've been trying to get a one FC, and like my network's pretty good. I reached out to everybody. One uh, FC is coming to the U.S. And I was trying to get it on their card, and I got a hold of everybody. I got everybody's email. I got the matchmakers. I got the executives. I got the manager. Um, I got a hold of everybody. And unanimously, they all said no. I made oh, highlight man. videos. I sent it to them. I talked about my story, entrepreneur, running for mayor, family man, out, et cetera, man, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what the reason is? I'm too old. Ah, oh, man. Age. Age finally became a factor. Yeah. I was like, fudge, oh, Really? I'm like, because of my age, but on the business side, I do get it. You know, if they invest in me, invest in I, may, young, they, have, I may retire after my first fight. Yeah, How sports, long am I going to last? Sports is a young man's game, unfortunately. Yeah, dude. Like, but you are the reigning champion. I'm sure fudge, there's going to be somebody that's going to want to put you Dude, I'll in. fight anybody, man. That's what like, I'm saying. Fudge. That's what I'm saying. It'll happen, bro. It'll happen. because. Yeah. But I'm going to keep trying. Yeah, that yeah, means I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to try. First I'm going to still keep trying. First things first is March, March 16th and yeah. get this dude up out of there. You know, and then, you know, who knows what, what, what could come, what possibilities could come after that, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I got to focus on not losing that first. Before Question for you. I, are you still coaching? Uh, Yeah. 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 That, do you think that um, martial arts in general is a very good outlet for people with mental health issues? Yeah, of course. That's what, yeah. that, that's what I've been trying to preach to a lot of people mm-hmm. lately is, is like, you know, you, uh, I, I'm getting older. When I, the gym I came up in, we were very old school and we trained very hard. You know, MMA was a fight and it wasn't practice. It was a fight. Uh, jiu-jitsu was the same way, you know. But as I got older, my coach started getting older. He started teaching. As I started becoming the, the teacher, he started telling me, slow down. You're going to make everybody, you can't tap everybody five, six times around. They're, he's, he's too, I started understanding, okay, I need to change the, envi- the, the scene as it goes along. And I feel like as I got older, like I've created an environment where I can have anybody in the class because I believe as I'm, as I'm getting older, I believe everybody should be doing martial arts. And some people can't 
do martial arts because they go to some gyms and they just get beat up and they get hurt and it's take, demotivating. It sucks. It, it, you know, and I feel like the martial arts can be such a benefit to uh, it can save someone's life. There's people that are suffering from depression. There's people that are suffering from alcohol, diff different things that, you know, if they had something to do with their life outside of what they're doing every day, which is not good for them, a good habit, martial arts is one of the best outlet outlets for that. Martial arts is the medicine for everything. I absolutely literally, believe that. Like literally everything. I've changed many lives and I believe, you know, as a youngster, you know, coming up and, and being, we had different paths. But I believe that, um, you know, getting in trouble and going through what I went through, you know, I went through what I went through for a reason. But being able to find martial arts when I did and being able to understand what it did for me and, and how much of a man it has made me and how much of a good human being it has made me to where I'm at a point in my life where I just want to help people for the rest of my life. And I want to give that same thing that it gave to me back to other people. That's what martial arts is. That's, that's what, and that's, that's what, what makes you a martial artist. And, and that's what you're doing as well. On top of uh, fighting, you're you've been teaching, and you teach consistently. Mm -hmm. and I just taught right before this. <laughs> so a, I just wanted to let everybody, kid. let everybody know that he, he's also teaching. You do private classes. You, yeah, private. I'm doing like a fight camp experience. So a lot of people um, want to know what it's like to fight, but they don't actually want to fight. So I put together this four week thing where I put everybody through a simulation fight camp. We even do a weight cut at the end of it and we do sparring. And the other thing too, it's not just giving you experience, it's making you a better partner. Yeah. Like uh, a, lot of, a lot of training partners out there, they'll have, they'll have fights. I have amateur fighters in our class that still don't hold pads properly or they still drill too hard for their partner, right? And so I wanna spend four weeks on making you not just a better partner, but what it's like to train in a fight camp. Yes. So it's, uh, it's definitely a cool experience. And, um, we got a good turnout so far, so super excited for that. That's pretty awesome, bro. So yeah, guys, March 16th, the defending WCK champion, the defending WBC champion. You guys tune in, make sure you guys support. I want to give you a big thank you for being here today, brother. You know, it means a lot to me that you took the time to come here and sit down with me. And, you know, what I'm trying to do is promote positivity and I'm trying to promote the, the people in my area that I feel that are a positive impact. I know you're also running for the mayor of Irvine. You're doing a lot of positive things. So I wanted to shed light on that. And uh, thank you for being here today. You guys make sure you tune in for his fight at the Cy Cyquan Casino. And then also, please let everybody know if you guys need a coach, if you guys want to learn some Muay Thai, we got the, the, the world champion right here in Orange County. You can get a hold of them and go train with them. Take advantage of these opportunities. I know for me, one of the things I want to do is have my son train with them. So I'm going to have, definitely get a couple of privates from you. Please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, guys, please make sure you tune in. Please let everybody know, brother, how they can get a hold of you, social media, uh, anything you want to plug right now, anybody you want to oh. thank, uh, please let everybody know uh, right now. Shoot right now okay man <laughs> shoot hope you got another five minutes man go ahead <laughs> take your time to make it as long as you want if you, anybody you want to thank brother any anybody you want to shout out this is your platform go ahead brother yeah um first and foremost god for everything uh wife and kid and dog uh april renzo buddha my backbone uh and then uh just everybody friends family um sponsor for just support for anything and everything i can do it's freaking crazy uh, if it could be fighting, I could get into ballet, like I could be a baker and like all my friends and families will still support me. It's freaking crazy. Um, the, the journey I've been on, you know, um, for this fight camp, it's been, it's been rough because, you know, um, being a business owner doesn't necessarily mean I'm rich. Right. And so, especially if I'm spending more time training, it means I'm making less time, making money. So my sponsors really helped pitch in to float me, um, while I focus on this fight camp. And so some of them, like, shout out to the sponsors. You got the names of them? Okay. Yeah, we have a uh, bespoke. They actually dressed me up today. I look much more mature these days. Um, like so, the fit, man. The you, shirt, the you. shirt's dope as hell, right, dude? Yeah. So I usually Looks wear comfortable as hell. I usually wear an extra large, and this is a size small. What's like, the name of the company again? Uh, bespoke in Newport Beach, California. Bespoke. How do you spell that? Uh, B S P O K E. Dope ass. And clothing. then, yeah. so I. I don't usually wear jewelry often because uh, I don't really go out that much. Uh, but I had to wear it today because I had to shout out my homies. And so my homies made me um, this cool chain. Um, it's a gold chain by Flawless OC. And Flawless then, OC. 
Yep, and then this dope. is West Coast Jade Company. They made me a custom all black jade boxing glove. That's dope, bro. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> I'm a big fan of jewelry, as y'all can see. Boston. Shout Love out. It. Shout out. So plug them one more time. What was the name of their company again? Uh, West Coast Jade. West Coast West Coast Jade. West Coast Jade. And then uh, Flawless OC. Flawless OC. Yeah. Shout out to them for the jewelry. Make sure what you else? guys check it out. What else we got what over here? Got? By the belts. So I know we got those championship yeah. belts up there. That's for sure. We okay. got, I got, uh, I'm working on the company called Bear. Verify. It's Verify. Uh, NFC and blockchain technology. And so this is my V-card. I tap your phone and all my contact goes in your phone. That's I'll, dope. I'll get you one too as well. That's dope. So when you're networking, just tap someone's phone and yeah. all your info is in the What's phone. What's the name of it? It's called Verify. I need one of those for yeah, sure. I'll, just, I'll get you. I'll, yeah. dude, everything I have, you can have. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. I need one of those for sure. Rocket Recharge, Energy Strips. Remember Listerine Strips? Absolutely. Um, they put it on your tongue. Well, yep. now they infused all kinds of cool stuff in here. So this is their energy. So I don't really drink coffee or anything like that. Um, but when I'm like dying, like uh, I did, I surveyed the homeless like a couple nights ago and uh, I was on three hours of sleep. So I took an energy strip on my tongue, helped get me, it made me survive. I've been on the Celsius lately, but I'm, I'll be trying that too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anything that gives me energy, I'll take it. Bam. <laughs> Bam. Yours. Thank you. Done. What else do I got? Okay. We got a few more. Let's see. No problem, bro. Take your time, bro. Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. Y'all need to hear the sponsors because these are the people that... Make it able for him to be able to do what he's doing. Make it easier. The you know the UFC might have took away uh, the big sponsors for a lot of the fighters, but there's a lot of small sponsors behind the scenes that help a lot of the fighters out. And these fighter these fighters need them to be able to do what they do. Yep, yep, yeah. very very helpful and supportive. Um, not just financial, but just general support too as well. They're all my good friends, and uh, you know on on top of that, they actually have legit products and services. I do have some friends that wanted to sponsor my camp, but I had to decline because I didn't believe in the product and the service. Cause I'm not going to pitch something that I wouldn't actually use. Yes. You know, so, um, a wad realty, uh, my, my friends that are in the real estate industry, uh, Awad Carol and Mary, yep. Selling homes and all that stuff. They're flipping all like the homes in orange County, which Check is dope. Them out. Yep. Need a home, hit me up and you don't even have to contact them. You can contact me and I'll link you up with all of them. There you go. Um, Tog, the almond law group. Um, those are my lawyers. This is my legal team. I have a legal team now. Um, <laughs> Boss. Yeah, dude, they're on top of it. For Lace and Loop, um, we created this strap, which is one of my sponsors too. Um, so you could lace up your own boxing gloves. So lace up boxing gloves, a little Velcro strap that you now have the fit and feel of a lace up glove, but you, you do it yourself. There. there you go. We had like six, seven replicas go out on the internet and, and, uh, and, uh, what was it, uh, my, my legal team, uh, all mean law group, uh, Ismail, my lawyer and good friend. He sent cease and desist letters to everybody, like hard, scary ones. And sure enough, all of them got pulled off the market. <laughs> so get yourself a good lawyer there you and go. make sure nobody messes with you ever. Make sure. Um, Jim Murray Roofing, uh, my, my good friend over in Orange, he fixes everybody's roof. Um, so generous, so kind, um, so supportive. Um, we work out a lot too as well. He's dope. Shout out. Um, my friends over at Hidden Hills Club, they do lifestyle clothing and stuff like that. Um, awesome dudes. They're everywhere. Um, Dream State. They have party buses and concierge for any event that you want to go to. Um, we got the Bonkot lady. Oh, if you, have, if, you like, if you like food, it's not too far from here. Bonkot is like this Vietnamese crepe thing that you eat, wrapped in lettuce and stuff. Super tasty. Um, my friends at Vorsteiner, they make custom, custom, what was it, carbon fiber parts, wheels. They dimped out all of my cars. Um, they even make super six cars. They make this sick car called Gunther Works. It starts at a million dollars. Damn. So freaking, you can imagine what a million dollar car would be. That's what they make. That's sick. Freaking insane. You definitely want to look them out. Check Even them out. Even if you don't plan on buying it, just look at it. See what a million car, million dollar car looks like. Check them out. Um, I started getting on supplements finally. So I worked with Everwell MD in Newport Beach. They got me on like B12, glutathione, uh, what else? Uh, L-carnitine, all that fun stuff. Shout and, out to Everwell. And it is such a huge difference. I don't know if you've ever tried that stuff. I just started using supplements i've been i've been getting on the supplement train uh, i'm getting crap. older <laughs> dude what a difference as you get older you're gonna need to yeah for sure um red lantern bar in irvine if you guys want to get some late night drinks and snacks um they're awesome mr mushy's good just make sure you don't drive afterwards if you get those late night, late night drinks not worth it ever uber 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 100%. in fact i'll tell you if you go to red lantern bar and you have too many drinks i'll have them uber you home there you go dang save yourself the trouble 100. um mr mushy's goods um, they make cool um, lifestyle clothing too, as well. And that is it for my paragraph of sponsors. <laughs> oh, good man! <laughs> making it, making it, making a fighter. Get, you know, be more comfortable. Get ready to fight, bro. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you give them your Instagram. Yeah, everything at Skulls Dang. 
pretty much just type Spell in Skulls Dang. Dang. S-C-O-L-E-S-D-A-N-G. The champ, y'all. We had him here today on the convo. Thank you for being here. Respect, my brother. Dude, respect, thank you so much big, for big, me on big, here. big respect. This and also fun. check out the the, the cryo spot. Yes, oh, oh cryo spot. And the cryo spot. Not Orange even just my sponsors, my business. Yeah, um, cryo spot, Santa Ana, California. Yeah. Uh, mention this podcast and get a free session on the house. There you go. Mention Bam. the podcast, get a free session, <laughs> and come check them out because you need some recovery. Hey, man, thank you guys for tuning in. We had the champ in the house today. It's been a great episode. I hope y'all keep tuning in. Like, subscribe, tell your mama, your daddy, and your auntie, and your cousins too. Peace. Bye.